gives me great pleasure to be your cicerone on our adventurous little voyage into fashion land. But today, ladies, as an innovation, you will see the models go through the rhythmic movement of everyday life, and you will be able to study the flow of the new line as it responds to the ever-changing flow of the female form divine. Et maintenant, our little peep into the coming season, and a glimpse of the future, too. Lumière, musique. This 1939 film was directed by George Cukor, who was the director of Philadelphia Story and Little Women. It's a great film and an underrated one. Despite being a film that is pretty much entirely comprised of women, it's actually very far from being a proto-feminist film of the 1930s. In fact, a lot of what this film proposes by way of gender relations is fairly antiquated, to be honest. Stop thinking about being happy years ago. You don't think about being happy? It had the time. The kids know. The old man's such a demon when he's drinking. Them big, strong, red-headed men. They're fierce. He beat you, Lucy. How terrible. Ain't it? When you think what a lot of women on this ranch need a beating worse than I do. Honey. Don't you know that we dames have got to be a lot more to the guy we marry than a schoolgirl, sweetheart? We got to be a wife, a real wife, and a mother, too, and a pal. Yeah, and a nursemaid. Sometimes when it comes to the point, we've even got to be a cutie. But if anything, this film shows us why feminism had to happen. Out of all 135 speaking roles on the set being portrayed only by women, the Women in the film only ever really talk about men. This results in something that the French feminist writer Monique Wittig would have called woman is a man-shaped hole, what she would say that about 30 years after the film was released. I think part of what makes this film work is not only the team we have in front of the camera, that being Norma Shearer, uh, Joan Crawford, and uh, Rosalind Russell, but also the team we have behind the camera, I think is obviously very important as to why this film works so well. The director, George Cukor, who, much like Ingmar Bergman, was a director known for being a woman's director, for the fact that they would always direct and write movies with very strong uh, female-led casts. In terms of writing, the film was adapted from a play written by a woman named Claire Booth Luce, and was adapted by Anita Luce and Jane Murphy into a screen play for the film, of course. And the fact that this movie was led creatively by women in terms of writing sort of gives it that natural authenticity. Uh, this is why the film doesn't really feel like it's a man's take on women, but a woman's honest critique of other women. And there's a great lack of the male gaze in this film in that it doesn't pander to that gaze and all of the women in this film aren't doormats so to speak they're not dumb blondes and they're not uh, just stupid airhead stereotypes that you would often find in movies written by men at that time and the best aspect of this film i think is definitely the writing there was a new york times review of the movie that had said that uh, Miss Booth had dipped her pen in venom and it was as if that the women actually literally <laughs> spit venom in this movie. Darling, shall I spit in Crystal's eye for you? You're passing up a swell chance, honey, where I spit no grass grows ever. And in terms of performances, every single speaking role is without exception absolutely spectacular. From the manicurist to the maid, to the sympathetic housewife, to the pernicious other woman. But in every way that you can judge this movie, from directing to acting to writing, everything about it is really s extremely wonderful. I think one, one criticism that I might have is that maybe it runs off for too long, it kind of um, uh, runs on and on and so somewhere in the middle, especially when they go to Reno you on the train for Reno. <laughs> on the train for Reno. 
But regardless, this movie is a great film, and I think it's it's definitely one of my favorite films. It's definitely, I think, an overlooked film considering the year that it was released, of 1939. I think it's one of the best films of that year. Up, I, I, I would put it up there with Stagecoach, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith Go to Washington, uh, The Wizard of Oz, Reigns Kane, and of course, you know, Nish, uh, Ninochka and uh, Gone with the Wind and so on. I think it's a fantastic film filled with a landmine of, you know, venomous wit and uh, pernicious one-liners. Quotable pernicious one-liners. Well, girls, looks like it's back to the perfume counter for me. And by the way, there's a name for you ladies, but it isn't used in high society, outside of a kennel. So long, ladies.